So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need this little box called Entech. Entech DMX USB Pro is what I use. What we're trying to do is get USB to speak to DMX, the standard lighting protocol for moving lights and many other things, fog machines, confetti cannons, all that kind of stuff. This, when I say lighting, you're not just speaking about lighting, you're speaking to anything that uses DMX. So if you have a special effect that has a DMX plug, you can control it with the lighting system in QLab. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into QLab right now. So check this out. Hopefully my microphone's a little better at this point in time. Uh, we're gonna go in here and we are going to go into light, okay? And before we do anything, we need to plug this in. So I have here a very long uh, USB cable and uh, all of my shows are already pre-saved with all of these details. So I don't have to do any of this other than plug it in. There's no programming, there's no setting anything up. We just plug it in and QLab automatically recognize it all. So that's the box. We're gonna plug it in here to my USB. Okay, now you might've noticed I put it, plugged a little adapter in and that's because the Entech box actually has a, um, a five pin uh, DMX, not a three pin. So a three pin looks just like a microphone cable. A five pin looks like this, and this comes with a five pin. You're gonna need this little adapter, which I'll try to remember to put that on my blog for you, but it's a five pin to three pin DMX adapter. And so we're just gonna plug that in. And this one always stays with this box. I don't put it with the rest of the cables. I usually leave it plugged in all the time. I'm gonna plug that in. It turns green, meaning that it's speaking to the computer. And we're now gonna go over to the computer screen and see if we can add that light. So the first thing we're gonna do is usually get the instruction manual out for a light like this. But in this case, because it may not be part of QLab. Uh, so we're gonna find out what its DMX values are uh, and what every channel does. Every light has a certain amount of channels. So channel one, let's say, will be the uh, shutter or the opacity or the intensity rather. Uh, channel two will be change color. Channel three might be red. Channel four might be blue. Channel three might be green. Channel uh, five may be strobe. So each light will tell you how many DMX channels it requires in your computer or your console. So in this case, I believe this is a four channel or a six channel lighting fixture. So each channel has to be assigned a slider. Every slider will tell the light what to do. And that's how you program it. You move the slider to the, to the point you want and uh, the color, the, the opacity, the, the gobo, whatever the light is, and then you save that look. When you fire the cue, that look is automatically pulled up and remembered in QLab's brain. So we're gonna use this light right now, which is a little moving head. We're gonna see if we can find that moving head in QLab. So we don't need to plug it in. It's not gonna search for it that way. We're gonna type in new instrument. In new instrument, we're going to change it from a dimmer and we're gonna go looking for uh, the actual light. So I'm just gonna type in the name of the light. It's called Stinger Spot. Stinger Spot. And there's a nine channel and an 11 channel version. Now the nine channel and the 11 channel are the same light. All we're gonna do is tell this fixture in the little um, display menu, function display right here, what version we're gonna be setting up. Now, obviously, 11 channels gives more flexibility, more options. Uh, there could be like a UV color. There could be more control over the shutter and all that kind of stuff. But you don't need to use it. If you just want to move the, the head around and do lights and on and off and color changes, that's the perfect setup for you. So today, for demonstration purposes, we're going to be using a nine channel. Uh, your light in its instruction manual will tell you the differences between that particular fixture what differences between the nine channel and the 11 channel light have, okay? So we're gonna select nine channel, and I believe we can just uh, hit enter, yep. And we're gonna name that Stinger Spot um, One, whoops, One, okay? Uh, we're gonna create the instrument, uh, one new instrument. So let's say you had seven of these or eight of these in your show. You could actually choose to make eight of them automatically and it'll do all the DMX values. So remember, your DMX channels, in this case, we're gonna start at number one. If 
you have nine channels, okay? This light is gonna be fixture number one on DMX channel number one. But remember, it takes nine channels to run it. So this light's gonna use DMX channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. If you're gonna add a second light, that light is gonna be uh, StarTech light number, or Stinger Spotlight number two, but you're gonna start its language to communicate with it on channel number 10. The reason is because you finished on nine. So now to move it over, you're gonna to have to go to number 10, okay? So number 10 is exactly what we're gonna be starting the second light if we had a second light to plug in. In this case, we don't. I'm demonstrating with one fixture only, so it's gonna use nine channels. Create the instrument, okay? Now it's gonna ask you the output. The output we're gonna be using is my USB, and it's gonna say right there on the bottom, NTEC DMX USB Pro. So I now can see that fixture. Okay, we're gonna hit done, and we're gonna now plug in the light. So we're gonna use this uh, plug that came with it, and we're going to plug it in like so. Okay, awesome. Now we need to plug in the DMX. So I have a, uh, a DMX cable right here. Now if you don't plug in the DMX light, the light just goes on to its own little like crazy scenario, which may be good if you're doing a Halloween party, but not if you're doing a show, right? So we're gonna go ahead and plug the DMX cable into your NTEC box. And then we're gonna plug the same DMX cable to the back of the fixture. And you can see the fixture automatically recognizes something plugged in. Now, I told it to be a DMX channel nine. So we're gonna to need to go into the menu here let me see if I can get this over to you to show you. Every fixture will be different, so this may change. But this is the, the menu here. We're gonna to have to go in the instructions and find out how to change the channel of this light. So I think I have to hold this down if I remember correctly. Yeah, address, enter. It's on five, because that was the, pre the, the previous show I used was five. So we're gonna lower this to channel one, so it matches the channel we're gonna set inside the QLab system. There you go. So it said channel, it said 11 channel, right there. We're gonna change that to a nine channel. Enter. And uh, I'm gonna make sure that I didn't change any settings by accident here, and that I'm still on uh, DMX address, and I'm on DMX channel one. We're gonna save that. Okay, now hopefully when we plug this in, it'll automatically go to DMX channel one, and I hopefully saved it correctly on the actual fixture to be a nine, uh, nine channel. Okay, so let's go back over here. We are gonna go to um, our, our actual cue list. So we're gonna view our toolbox, and we're gonna go down to light, which is uh, command six for shortcut. So there's a light. We're gonna go to um, levels, and we're gonna go to light patch. We're gonna go down here, we're gonna highlight that light. It says nine channels, USB, NTAC, and we are gonna auto patch select that. It's gonna start at address number one, okay? And we're gonna to go to USB device, NTAC, auto patch selected. So now it'll automatically patch that in for us. So now there's no issues there. You can see there's no uh, red box or X telling you something's wrong. We're gonna hit done. There's no, uh, we're gonna label this uh, first Q. Move that so you can read it a little bit better. Yep. Now we're gonna go into light dashboard right here. And light dashboard is the coolest thing ever. Because when you open this, go down like this, we should be able to start getting control over that light. And look at that, it just moved. So we're gonna hit clear all, okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this so we can read it a little bit better. Now you see, out of all the different movements, uh, channels here, uh, is our dimmer mode, our function, our movement speed, our intensity, our shutter, our gobo, color, tilt, pan, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is put our intensity all the way up, and right there, you can see the light on that corner is, uh, is turning on, okay? Now, every light is different, 
So if you close the shutter, the shutter will close. All right. So we're going to make sure the shutter is open. We're going to uh, put Gobo right there. And uh, we're going to keep it white. Now here's the cool part. We're going to go into pan and tilt. If I highlight pan and tilt, you can see a little dot right here. This is the cool thing about moving lights. I can now move my mouse around and that's going to move exactly where I want it. Okay. So let's put that light right here in that position. Okay. Hopefully you can see that pretty good on that screen. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and say update the selected queue. And that's because that is the queue that I just chose to save. Okay. So, um, we can go here and move this queue out of the way by getting rid of this. And uh, let's make another queue. And this queue is going to go, we're going to go light dashboard. We're going to hit clear all, which is basically telling all of the lights to go um, to, to nothing, to black out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and record all and make a new queue with all right here. So whatever look I've just created, it'll affect every single light, which is what I want in this case. So new queue to all. Okay. We're going to take this queue. So we're going to delete that queue because I made a new queue. So we're going to delete that queue. Uh, we're going to label this black out all. Okay. And we're going to hit triggers and we're going to let make the letter B be for blackout, which means every time in rehearsals or I'm setting up, I can press the letter B. It's going to fire the blackout. I don't have to go through the queue list and find it. Okay. So we're going to fire that queue. Now, one thing I prefer is with the lighting, I, I will change the action time to one second or you might want to snap, which is, which is zero. So in this case, when I fire the very first cue, that light goes right there to that exact position. Ta-da! You've just saved your first cue. How awesome is that? Now, when I want the light to black out, I just press B, it snaps to black, okay? So that is how simple it is. If we want to make a new cue, we can copy this and paste it. We can fire that cue. Make sure you highlight it because we're going to be editing the highlighted cue. We're going to go here. We're going to choose, whoops, sorry. We're going to go to levels first. Then we're going to go to light dashboard and we're going to physically be able to see what changes I want. So let's say I want to change that color to, uh, we're going to keep it on that one right there. And uh, let's take the color and make the color go kind of uh, very fast scrolling and we're going to change uh, change the gobos as well. So in this particular queue, I want all the lights to be changing gobos and changing colors. We're going to save that as new queue with all. Okay. Now in that case, I added a brand new queue. I did not edit the previous queue, which is what I said I was going to do originally, but I forgot. So in this case, I made a new queue. It was automatically labeled one. We're going to call this flashing. Oh, I can't type today. We're going to call this flashing gobo change. Okay. It's not the right word for it, but delete that cue. Uh, so if I fire the first cue, that's the look we have. If I fire the second cue, it's going to do the flashing. If I jump back, it's going to go back to exactly what we wanted. So remember that when you start adding new lights, uh, remember you're going to change everything. Don't just change the, uh, save the updates. For example, if your previous queue had seven lights in the off position and your new queue turns on one lighting fixture, if you do an update, it will just add that new fixture into whatever queue is, which means if your seven other queues, lighting queues happen to be in a white and you add the new one into it, it won't turn the other seven off because you didn't save it as a full look. You just saved it as a update look. So remember every queue that I do, I try to program it that this is the look that I want this entire scene to look like, not just add this new fixture into whatever previous look was already playing. It may be the way you want to do it. I try to not do that because it can be very confusing if I'm jumping back and forth and copying cues. So B for blackout. We're going to jump to the flashing gobo look and it's making its way there over a long period of time because I had a five second intro uh, or, or a five second action cue. We don't want that. We're going to change this 
to one second. We're gonna hit blackout again to see if that works a little bit better. We're gonna hit flashing gobo Q, and now it goes immediately there. It took one second to get there. So if you don't want it taking a second to get there, we can black it out again. Go over here and adjust the action Q to zero. Blackout, make sure it's blacked out, and we're gonna try to fire that Q again, and it's right there automatically as quick as the actual light can physically move there, okay? So if I change the first cue, it'll now go to that first cue that we saved, all right? So we're now controlling a moving light. Um, and now all of your scenes, your groups, you can put your lighting cues in there with time delays and fire those cues, and I'll show you that later on in the series, but I wanted to show you how I physically can plug in lights because this is the, the coolest way to get control over your lighting fixtures. And trust me when I tell you, make sure that you label all of your actual lights. So this is lighting one, take a sticker on the back, put this is light number one, because you don't wanna pack up 10 lights and put them in your truck or your cargo, go to the next venue and then not remember which light goes where. I make a map and I make sure that every light goes in the same position on the stage, because that way 90% of my locations are gonna stay exactly the same other than the fact that certain theaters can be smaller or wider. Um, but this is so cool. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys like this. If you have any questions, message me and I can walk you through it. But we're going to do a lot more in this lighting series. <laughs>